So question, um, what, <laughs> what actually is the Shadewood Saga? Um, well, um, the book I'm launching today is actually the last one. So it's a four book series, okay? So if you like your um, science fiction stroke fantasy, uh, and, and genre's, a, genre's a slight problem, I'll get to that. Uh, if you like your, your your sagas in four book pieces, then this is this is right up your street, okay? So it's a four book saga, I've just, just done the last book. Uh, but what is it about? So basically the premise is that all the problems of today where we have you know ecological destruction and global warming and, and all of these problems okay and society breakdowns all these it all gets out of hand and we don't get to grips with it okay so it's a, it's a little bit pessimistic um yeah as, as, a, as a sort of setup so we, we don't get to grips with it it gets worse uh, and ultimately we're forced to abandon the earth um and, and, and find new places to live. The Earth becomes uninhabitable in the dim and distant past of this story. And uh, what that means is we have to go elsewhere, okay? And, um, but I didn't want to do a sort of Star Trek-y, Star Wars-y sort of technology thing. Um, so there is no hyperspace, there's no warp drive, there's no, there's no clever, faster-than-light technology, because as far as we know, it's prohibited by the laws of physics. And I wanted to stick to astrophysics and physics as close as I could um, rather than kind of invent magic hand wavium um, unobtainium devices in order to make things happen in the story. Um, so it's all grounded in real science and that's been a, an absolute kind of bedrock of the series. It's real science that underpins everything. So even though there appear to be magical or mystical things happening sometimes, actually underneath them there's a, there's a rationale which is based in real science. Um, so nothing that happens in the story should be impossible by the laws of physics as we understand them today. That was, that was, a, that was a, a founding principle of, of, of the book. So we've had to leave the Earth, but we leave the Earth in relatively primitive ships, okay? So not much more advanced than things that we could manage today. Um, you know, they are sublight. They take hundreds of years to get to their destinations. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a risky undertaking, okay? Now, um, within a 20 light year radius of the Earth, there are plenty of stars, but there aren't that many places where habitable planets might be. Um, and so I drew on... Um, um, some research and some colleagues of mine who actually do proper astrophysics and science um, and exobiology and exoplanet work to work out where and in what condition planets out there that we could potentially go to would be and, and what they would be like. And I hit upon a particular type of planet which um, uh, is Earth-sized, Earth-like in that sense, uh, but around a much different type of star called a red dwarf. And a red dwarf is a um, much cooler, much smaller far less energetic star than our sun. They last a lot longer, um, but um, they're much, much cooler. So in order to be warm enough, the planet has to be really, really close to the star. Um, you know, re actually really, really close, you know, way closer than the orbit of Mercury in our, um, our solar system in order to be warm enough for liquid water to exist. Now that gives you some weird and wonderful phenomena. Basically the planet becomes what's called tidally locked which means that one side of it is always facing the star and one side of it is always facing away. So you don't have night and day in the traditional way that we have on Earth, that we, we're used to. You just have constant daylight or constant darkness or constant sunset, sunrise, depending on where you are on the planet. And you can alter you know, where, what, what things look like by moving, you know, <laughs> so you don't have a night and day. Um, so that's, that's the world in which all the adventure takes place. Now, the story opens thousands of years after that colonization of this planet occurred. And surprise, surprise, things have gone wrong. Um, so knowledge of the colonization event itself has been lost. Um, it has been lost in time, lost in the midst of time. The technology that supported people coming to this world from Earth has also been lost. So people don't know about spaceships. They don't know about stars, actually, or anything like that, because they can't see them. Um, so many, many generations have gone by since that initial colonization event and the technology level has completely regressed to a sort of feudal, um, uh, feudal state. And this is where the story opens, where um, you know, a feudal society exists um, um, and it's got a sort of fantasy feel to it, yet it's a science fiction story underneath it. Because un unbeknownst to our protagonists, um, the technology that their ancestors left behind is still operating and it's still doing things and it's still trying to make things okay um, because this planet has actually been terraformed for the colonists and this machinery and this technology still needs to do its job but nobody knows it's there nobody knows it, what it does um, nobody knows what its effects are 
um, except that some people have strange religious powers or strange magical powers and can do things that look magical or unusual um, and um, you know they grow into positions of authority and power and so on and so forth because they have they have the capability to do so um, and then that gives you religion and it gives you worship and it gives you adulation all those kind of things that go with it so all those things are mixed in there and then another part of the the, um, the populace of the planet is rediscovering slowly some of the technology of its ancestors and figuring out hang on a minute you know there's, there's clues here, there's, there's relics, there's, there's stuff that indicates that we were capable of bigger things in the past. So what happened? What went wrong? Uh, why have we lost this capability? And start asking questions. And other people are trying to suppress the truth and so on and so forth. So that's, that's the sort of mix as the story opens. Those are the sort of things that's going on. And Shaywood really is the story of three young people. So two girls and a boy. Um, the first girl is heavily indoctrinated by a religious sect and sees everything, at least initially, through the eyes of um, a fundamentalist belief in religion. Um, uh, the boy is kind of in this sort of technologically emergent part of the world, uh, and he's basically, you know, just keeps asking questions. You know, why? why but why? Why, why? why doesn't this work? You know, what do we do? Where do we come from? You know, all those sort of things. And he wants to know. He's got a real thirst for knowledge. And it's through him we see that discovery. And the third one is... Um, uh, it's sort of the heart of the story. She's a very naive young girl to start with. Um, you, you just want everyone to be nice to each other. And then she learns that the world is a much harder and tougher place as she goes through her life. And, you know, things happen to her and it changes her personality. And you see that through the series of stories. So Shadewood is a story of discovery of a weird and wonderful novel planet. It's an uncovering of ancient history and myth and legend. Um, it's adventure, you know, there's lots of scrapes and narrow escapes and things going wrong and people shouting at each other and all that sort of thing. There's battles, there's all sorts of stuff going on there. But it has a sort of fantasy feudal society feel, yet it's based, it, based on grounded in actual real science. There is nothing on this world that is fantastic. I mean, it's beyond credibility. Um, it's all based on real science. So hopefully that's piqued your interest. <laughs> that's what the Shamewood saga is all about.